So I'm going to show you today how Renoise can be used as a synthesizer all by itself. So let's start by loading a very basic waveform and we'll start with the saw waveform. And luckily for you I already know how to tune this so we'll just get it tuned and listen to our basic saw sound. As you can hear, it is just your standard uh, saw sample, looks pretty normal in the waveform editor. And what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll turn this into a 3 oscillator synthesizer. Alright, so first things first, uh, where most of the magic happens is in this instrument settings button. So as you can see, we have our sample loaded and it's also uh, loaded in here as its own layer and probably the most powerful thing for uh, making a sample sound good and I'll just get the level trimmed is this button. This opens up your envelopes tab and your envelopes tab are your primary uh, sha sound shaping uh, other than the actual sound of the sample you load. So the most important one um, is going to be volume. And as I load this volume one, um, I just want to also point out a thing in here called NNA. NNA is very important because it controls how your sample plays the volume envelope. So I'll just show you right here what I mean. We will make just a quick uh, few notes and these should hopefully illustrate the NNA settings. So as you can hear, uh, with this NNA set to cut, the notes sort of cut each other off. I'll switch it to note off and you can hear what happens. So the notes will continue as if a note off was sent and it will play from the sustain point, this white line, uh, and play out the rest of the envelope. And then if I change this to continue, it will act as if no note off has been sent. It will play at the sustain point the whole time. All right, so that's uh, what the NNA button does. I prefer it at note off just because it gives me a little bit of release on my samples uh, and can sort of uh, just introduce a little bit of uh, nice uh, depth to the sound as you have different notes sustaining over each other. Uh, so it kind of depends on what you're trying to accomplish uh, with the samples in the pattern. Uh, it is very much a per uh, usage thing. For example, if you had hi-hats, an open hi-hat, and a closed hi-hat in a drum kit, you wouldn't want them playing over each other. Uh, so you would set NNA to cut, for example. So what we have now is uh, the volume envelope set to setting, and as you can see it starts very high, and then it drops really quickly, and then sort of has a little bit of a tail. And that is just a very nice kind of like plucked sound. And by changing the volume envelope, obviously you can get different sounds uh, and shapes to the sound. And the sustain will sustain it at a certain point in the volume envelope for as long as the note is held. So very simple there. And then also you can change the size of the envelope with this so, um, that's very basic uh, controls to the envelope, and as you can see, you already have a lot of potential for uh, shaping the sound of a synthesizer, uh, or waveform, or sample, or whatever you load in there. So, we're going to show you a little bit of an advanced trick here. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit neat. So, I have this waveform uh, tuned 
and what I want to do is duplicate this and set it to the same root note and then use this fine tune and detune it a few cents. And as you can hear, we now have a detune sound. So in synthesizer tunes, this is like having two oscillators detuned against each other. It's a very powerful and subtle technique, and uh, if you're still with me, you can sort of see where we're going with here. We have uh, pretty much a way to add uh, samples is uh, the same as adding oscillators in this setup we have here. So I'm going to add another sample. This is going to be a square sample. And of course I'm going to detune that uh, about, I'm going to uh, load it in about an octave above so it will play an octave lower and it will kind of fatten up the sound. And I'm just going to lower the volume on this. And because of that we now have a three oscillator synthesizer. Alright, so next I want to show you kind of the full power of the um, actual envelopes in the Reno synthesizer. So I'm going to turn on this cutoff and I'm going to turn on this resonance and I'm going to turn the resonance down to zero. Uh, this is because when you load the cutoff it will uh, load the resonance at a default value and the resonance will actually be somewhere up here so it gives you a very resy sound uh, which we don't want for the purposes of example and I'm going to change this just to your basic uh, two-pole LP filter but noise has a pretty high variety of filter types so you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of ways to shape the sound. Uh. Uh, as you can see, there are quite a few different filter options built into here, so you get a lot of different uh, sounds that you can use. So this one, let's make quite a uh, long uh, attack on the cutoff and we'll get kind of a, a, a big rising sound and you can sort of see uh, the cutoff envelope in action here. So that's quite loud but um, you can sort of see the power of the envelope here. Um, so I'm going to show you a few more advanced features now and I'll open up a little window called the external editor and this just makes a big window in here of uh, the envelope you're looking at. So the other thing you can do is you can change the type of envelope. Um, there are a couple of options in Renoise. You can change it from a curved envelope to a linear envelope, which will just uh, ramp up uh, linearly, or uh, you can change it to points, which will change everything to discrete values. Points are useful if you want to create interesting rhythmic effects, uh, which we'll do here. And as you can see, now that we have a held note, uh, we get a sort of interesting rhythmic gated effect. Which brings me to the next part, which is this loop. And you have a few loop options, but loops generally will let you uh, take an envelope and just repeat it over uh, a series of time. Um, so the loop envelope on the cutoff will loop as long as uh, the note is sustaining, obviously. And if you put it on the volume envelope, uh, this release will trigger how long the loop lasts. So zero release will uh, sustain infinitely and the longer release uh, uh, will make
make it sustain a shorter amount of time. A little bit backwards, but that's how it works. Uh, you also get a pitch envelope, uh, which you can turn on. Um, this thing is useful. Um, you, you could use it for maybe really, really fast uh, percussive sort of sounds. Um, detune. Uh, it generally uh, quantizes to the semi tone, so it's not too useful. Um, for the pitch stuff, I'd recommend, unless you want extreme settings, to not use the en envelope, uh, but to use another feature, which is the LFO. And you can uh, change LFOs by going into the LFO button and switching one of these to a waveform type. So uh, the frequency, it is set in ticks. Um, there will usually be six ticks per beat. Uh, so every six of these uh, equals or uh, one sixth of a note. And that's with default values. So 36 usually quantizes to about an eighth note or a sixteenth note or however much. Um, that's most of the functions. Uh, a couple things uh, that are also interesting. Um, this loop option uh, you can loop the sample forward, backwards, ping pong. Uh, same goes for your envelope here. You can loop the uh, envelope forward, backward, or backwards and forwards. And um, this interpolate option. Now this is per sample, but this will kind of change how the sample is played. So you can't hear it with the uh, with the filters enabled, but if we were to use lower values, it sort of uh, enables or disables uh, anti-aliasing on the oscillators. So it'll get rid of some of that uh, some of that uh, dirtier sound and give you a smoother waveform. However, you might not want to enable it for various reasons. If you need a lower fly sound or if you're transposing so uh, square waveforms, etc. But that will give you pretty much a full functioning synthesizer using just the built-in Renoise plugins. We've started with the very basic saw and square waveforms and we've gotten a very complicated instrument sound that are totally blowing out our speakers right now. further enhance these if you want to use some of Renoise's built-in plugins, you know, add some delay, maybe a bit of chorus, and you can end up with a, a pretty interesting sound. So the built-in settings in Renoise are really powerful. The built-in tools are definitely underestimated and if you want to do something awesome like build your own synthesizer uh, it's very easy and you get a lot of options for uh, shaping the tone in very powerful ways and I hope this video kind of illustrates just what Renoise can do by itself uh, with its own built-in tools and not using any external plugins or anything. Thank you.